Breakers and Sheep Punchers. This is Jury Duty Summons, and today I have with me my brother. Hi. And uh, today we want to show you his 12-hour clock using uh, Minecraft Redstone and Pistons. Now, we've done some testings on the clock, and the clock turns out to be accurate within a minute over the course of an entire day. And so that just seems, that's just quite amazing to me. Um, so, Elliot, how, how long do you think it took you to build this? About 24 hours. I did pull an all-nighter. And, um, yeah, so let's, t let's take a look at some of the mechanics behind the scenes. All right, so what we have here is the control panel. So, Elliot, tell us, um, tell us how we can set this. Well, as you can see, you have three buttons in front of you and a switch. The switch activates the timing circuit and starts the clock. The other buttons will add time to it, like uh, that button right there will add about an hour. Next button over will add 10 minutes, and one more over would add a two. We'll add one minute. It's a little hard to see in the day, but you can kind of see everything cycle over over there. If you switch it to night, it'll be a lot easier to see. There you go. It does take a, a second to update it, just because of how far it is away. There we go. You see it switch over right there. It's going to slide a few minutes to it. Ta -da. Right there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You know what? Let's leave it on while we go take a look at it. Time, day. All right. Let's... Uh, yeah, well, we're going to go up to the front of it. I'll show you guys how it works. And then from there, we'll go behind. We'll show you the memory we use and the all the circuitry back there. All right, we're in front of the clock, and we're in front of the second hand here, or the second uh, display. And you can see it, uh, the different torches turning on and off to change what number is being displayed. All right, and let's take a look from overview here. Let's jump up to the top. All right, so we're now at the very top of the clock, above the second hand. And you can see all this freaking redstone. These are all essentially circuits to just bring the uh, circuits from these different memory units to the clock faces. All right, let's let's get down there. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should just be able to follow those all the way back. Oh, yeah, I guess you would be able to, huh? The little inversion circuit there. And this right here is one of the memory units. Hmm. And this is the very similar, this is the same same kind of system as I have in my other project I showed everybody yesterday, or a couple days ago, because it wasn't just yesterday. Yeah, you know, by the way, thank you for that. Uh, this project would have taken a lot longer had you not pointed um, pointed out the fact that I could build one of these. Yeah, and the, um, the way this works, the basic way this works is the second hand, uh, every second, this cycles one uh, block forward. And... At the very edge, one very edge. I don't. Which side is it? The left side or the right side here? That that toggles the next number over. The far left hand side. Far left hand side. Okay, so it must be this red block right here. Yes. So this red block is toggling the next uh, memory circuit over here to go one forward, and this memory circuit has the same kind of thing. Is it the the far left again? Yes. Okay. You can even see the redstone on the bottom. The you can follow that. That that right there is the circuit that triggers the next one. If you wait a few more, looks like about 20 more seconds. Okay. And you, you can see it toggle. And it goes this direction here? Yep. That right there is a limiter, actually. I um, determined that if you leave that on, it will just keep the next clock cycling. What this does right there is it takes a, um, a, long, a long pulse of power and limits it to about a tenth of a second. Okay, and that's so this whole thing will only cycle once rather than continuing to cycle over and over again. Yep. And there we go. And this continues all the way up to 12, to, to the hour mark and to 12 hours. Now, although it is right now set up for 12 hours, it would only take um, swapping out the punch card to turn it into a 24-hour clock. Yeah, so you just make this, this punch card here longer to do that, right? No, I, w I wouldn't need a make it longer at all. I would just need to modify the glass blocks. Oh, okay. That'd be easy then. Yep. So yes. And uh, if you wanted to, you could add another column for days and then uh, throw another kind of memory or another kind of display up there to show the days. Yep. 
I think that's your next plan, isn't it? <laughs> that is. All right. Let's see. Uh, anything else we want to show on this before we go? Um, no. I, I mean, no. That's about it. It's a very simple, very small. As as far as I can tell, it's uh, actually the the smallest smallest seven segment clock built today. I think you're right. I haven't seen a um, I haven't seen anything smaller. And using the pistons and the punch cards does uh, makes a whole bunch of circuitry much much smaller than it otherwise would be. Oh, absolutely. And it makes it at a level that I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> the pistons actually uh, the, the the piston memory. Um, is a lot easier of a concept, at least for me to grasp. All right, and the last thing we wanted to show is this timing circuit right here. This runs the entire project. So, the, whoa, <laughs> there's a bit of memory uh, lag, well, recording lag on there, but uh, it, it is very, very consistent. Oh, absolutely. It keeps going in circles. Every, circles. Um, every piston right there basically controls a row of pistons below. We're on top of the memory right now. Yes, that's right. We're on top of the memory, and you can see the um, the the piston rows of pistons down there. Each where it comes off, where each where each side where it comes off controls one row of the pistons. I, I showed a little bit more about that on my uh, previous video on the um, the sixteen segment display, and I do intend on creating a video about how to build this kind of memory unit here for your own projects. It's it's very simple once you get the concept, but it's um, it looks like a tangled mess right here. But uh, that's just because it <laughs> kind of is. Um, <laughs> all right. If you have any questions or any comments, just let me know in the comments field down, down below. And if you have um, if you like the video, if you like this project, please 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 give it a thumbs up, and that will help us um, get some more uh, you know views on this. And oh, just froze again. Server lag. No, that was uh, that was client lag. Client lag? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it caught up. So it was client lag. We are host. We are hosting this project on a server, after all. Yeah, this is on a multiplayer server. Uh, don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and um, have a nice evening, everybody. Goodbye.